So just uh, raise your hands how many of you are new to design. Great, great. Almost, okay, 90, 95 percent. Okay, great. So today we have a session plan which is like an introduction to Figma. But before that we are going to talk about what design is, what design process is, some things, some terms that we use in design, such as typography, fonts, color, and then we'll do a deep dive in Figma. After that, there's a lunch break, and after that, we are going to design our own NFT digital art. Sounds good? All right, so we'll start. So what is design? Okay. So design means a lot in different fields, in different contexts. But when we talk about design in our scenario, we are talking about creating a plan or a solution to a problem. That's a general design definition. So your design is basically creating a solution for a problem. It can be any problem. It can be a, a problem related to engineering. It can be a problem related to users. It can be a problem related to, let's say, house, furniture, interior, anything. And that all, a solution to that all is a design. And uh, so there's a lot of step in designing. Uh, that's what we call design process and design thinking. And uh, for our purpose, we are talking, going to talk about design in digital settings, that is digital designs, the design for interfaces, the design that you see on your mobiles, the design that you see on your web pages, and how can we improve that, what goes behind the making of these designs, the user experience, the user interface, and all of those stuff. So, before going into all those details, let's have a small discussion. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Okay, so we will have a very small discussion, five, five minutes about what's a good design and bad design. And I have a couple of questions from you, for you, and then you can just raise your hand and answer it, okay? So let's say, uh, let's compare two applications, email applications, Gmail versus Outlook. So how many of you prefer Gmail? These events, and how many of you prefer Outlook? All right, so anyone want to talk why Outlook and not Gmail or vice versa? Just you can shout the answer, Yeah. Gmail has a better user interface. Gmail has a better user interface, okay. So why do, still prefer, why do people still prefer Outlook? Yeah, so why Outlook? Outlook, but then uh, the way uh, they have kept the colors of the front page, and then the way they are designed on the left side, the inbox, and this all things for Gmail, you have to just click somewhere, then it will pop out, and then you select. But here it's just more organized, and everything is in front of you, so the switching gets faster. If you want to. So basically, he feels that uh, the UI, the UX of Outlook is better, and of course, there's a lot of is like okay why gmail is better or why outlook is better but we are not going to tell you're just discussing that okay there are some interfaces which are good there are some interfaces which are bad there are some interfaces which are like okay but it does the does the work right so let's say uh, google pay versus paytm so i am hoping that everyone likes google pay right it's simple that you just scan a QR code and just do whatever you want to do paytm is more than a upi system it has a lot of things a lot of functionalities and maybe you won't like it so but my point is that it depends it depends on a lot of things that what makes a good design what makes a bad design but your end goal is that the design should work for the user not for yourself uh, what happens is a lot of time when we are creating these projects for ourselves when we are creating projects uh, in college we are not thinking about uh, how the user how the end user of this particular product will be facing what issues they will be facing and uh, but once you think start thinking about that you are actually improving your product marginally and making it usable for users making it usable for making it, making it a better product and uh, we can go on like there's uber ola like in Zapto. so there's a lot of comparison you might like one thing for one thing you might not like it for something for example zomato versus swiggy uh, 
just a couple of months back, they had a very different interface. Now they have a much similar interface. Uh, so a lot of things goes behind making these applications, and this is what we are here to discuss today. Uh, yeah. So we'll go to the next slide. Okay. Before going to the next slide, any guess about what is UI and what is UX? Uh, again, 
related to a team. Okay, it basically, it's a system where uh, you define all the rules. Uh, so, okay. so you define all the identity principles and best practices of your, let's say, company. And what you create are components and assets which can be used again and again in a design, again and again in your product. For example, if you see Google, they have almost uh, have a similar design structure across all their uh, products. So Google Docs, Google Presentations, Google Forms, uh, Google Websites, they all have a design system which is very common. And you can just, like, the user can just uh, go and start using it without any issues because once they are familiar with the design of how Google uh, works, uh, they can just start using other products as well. So this kind of system is called a design system where everything is defined uh, and uh, it basically helps the team to basically uh, prototype faster, make products faster. Uh, it also has a developer team because you already have this functional components that you're creating. Uh, along with the designs, and uh, yeah, so maybe uh, if you can just scroll down, uh, you can maybe start the material design line. First thing, yeah. So this is the material design that uh, a lot of you guys from Google and what it does is this or uh, let's say components. So basically these are all the components that Google uses in their application and these are like open source and even you can use this along with Android designing or Flutter designing and what this really helps is that you can make product faster, you can product faster and everything is defined. Okay, so these are like have the best practices, what kind of colors you have to use, what kind of font you have to use, and uh, it helps team or individual uh, to make a better design than, you know, just starting from scratch. So this is uh, Google design, you can have a look, it's, it's called mental.io. Uh, so we have a similar, we do not have a similar, but show uh, the status. So when, when I was in TEDx, uh, what we are trying to do is we are also making a design system. This is a much loose design system. It just has the colors, the logos, the fonts, and what kind of posts that we need. So some basic information, some basic colors and uh, fonts, so that we can have a much you know organized, uh, because we are a team of three to four, so we wanted to have something which is more organized and which is more standard through our, throughout the TEDx event. So if you just, uh, if you just scroll down. So this is how uh, the final post was looking like. So this was for the uh, previous to previous credits. Wait, previous. Yeah. So it has a couple of mix. Uh, so yeah. So as you can see, we have a consistent design, consistent logo, consistent fonts, and this way it helps to you know create a feeling. Uh, it helps. It helps to have a standardized design across whatever you, your products are, whatever you are trying to do, and it basically makes things really fast. You know, I just I don't have to think anymore. I just have to okay, this is the format. I follow this format, and it looks good. So, this is our design system. There is a lot of design system. Uh, even uh, so, for example, this is uh, something that Moodle learned or created. So, what you can do is you can define a lot of fonts. Let's say heading zero, heading one, heading three, and similarly you can design colors and primary colors, secondary color, and gradients. So this are all part of the design system that Moji was working on. Uh, so yeah, uh, coming to some more keywords that we usually use in design are uh, typography. So there are basically five type of typography. There is serif, there is sans serif, sans serif is like without the uh, you know, so serif is basically this notch, this small uh, feet that they have, and then serif is without those feet. So if you see, it's a much cleaner look. Uh, over here, it's more like a feet. There is this small feet that this alphabets have, and uh, yeah. So there was like more traditional. This is like the new type of fonts that we use. Script is more like cursive writing kind of fonts. 
and mono space is something that you must have seen in terminals. They have like the little same size, same size in the sense that they have the same space. That's a mono space. And displays like uh, fonts which are more, you know, artistic look, which can be used for logos, which can be used for t-shirt design and stuff like that. So they are more like a display font. Uh, coming to colors, of course, colors are very important in design, uh, especially for UX. And uh, so this is how a traditional color picker look like. So what's a color picker? Color picker is a tool which can be used to pick colors. So how this usually uh, colors are made is in computer science. This is what we learned maybe in a few years. But how we usually make colors are there are three values that we mix, R, G, B. Let me do so much that now. And there is also one thing called alpha, A for alpha, which is the transparency of the color, transparency of the object. So using RGB and alpha, you can create literally any color that you see on the screen. And uh, this is how the color picker looks like. So, so RGB uh, has a value from 0 to 255, that's 256 different values. And so basically, you can encode those RGB values into hex values. So first two is for R, second two is for G, and this is for blue. And using that, you can create this. Uh, you can make any color that you want. And uh, so the tools work like this. So there is all this different kind of colors. This is the alpha, and then you can basically change different values that you want, uh, depending if you want it light, dark, and stuff like that. And or if you already have a color value, just put the color value in, and you can uh, get the color that you want. So we have this particular tool uh, which was searched by Moldy and what it does is basically shows uh, how two colors will go together in a setting where uh, one color is a text and one color is a background. Uh, so for example, uh, we choose the text color and the background color. So if it's something like white and background is something like a, a blue. Uh, this is our failing the test. So what it says is, okay, so it will fail for the text, it will fail for large text, it will also fail for the graphic components. And uh, this way you can basically decide what kind of color scheme that you are working on. Will it be good? Will it be good for users? Will it be visible? And stuff like this. So there are all there are a lot of things in the colors. Okay, there are color schemes. Uh, there are a lot of uh, techniques that people use. We are not going into that because it's very context based that okay this is color scheme is used for particular this work so this is just a general introduction okay this is how color works listen uh, there are color palettes you can go online if you are looking for colors like good colors combination you can just search say color palettes and you have a lot of color palettes which you can directly use this is how i usually work and yeah okay so coming to wireframes and prototyping
screen, you'll get to know the active cells on the display, and you rotate it there. So this is how it works. And this is a overlay which pops up when you click a particular button, and everything should be set by default during the prototyping phase. This is a transformation overlay which is very important in an application when you make payments or want to book something. If there is no confirmation overlay or a page, user doesn't know if that particular thing is searching for or want to order is confirmed or not. So that makes it a better experience for the user. Okay, so Muli is giving access to the file so that we can have a look. Uh, any doubts so far? Anything? Any comments? No? All right. All right. Uh, maybe you can use this time to make a Figma. How many of you have the Figma account ready? Okay, great. I think we can then uh, log in into Figma. Uh, we'll share a link. We'll share a link? Or they can... No, we'll... Sh just create a blank file. Just create a blank file. Uh, we'll try to make something, so, uh, like a hands-on thing, uh, okay, so maybe you can just practice Figma right now. We'll show you all the tools, we'll show you how you can make a blogging screen specifically, and uh, we'll tell about different details, different tools.
So, what is trying to connect this dark talk? Uh, we have something else to show. Okay, so meanwhile, let's talk about Figma. So, Figma is this amazing design tool. It's free for students, so if you log in with your Outlook, uh, you can get full access. Where you can create unlimited files, you can collaborate up to like 100 people, which is amazing. And uh, the main utility of Figma is basically having designs where you can collaborate. So collaboration of Figma is really easy, it's really fast, and it's a very simple tool. Yeah. So it's a very simple tool, and uh, uh, it does not have a lot of features. Okay, so when we talk about Adobe or uh, Photoshop, it has a lot of features. It's very overwhelming. But if you look at uh, Figma, it's very simple. Just uh, four or five tools, and uh, other than that, there's a lot of properties. But it's a very simple to compare to our own. Uh, and uh, the great thing about is collaboration and it has something called community where there is already a lot of design files available and you can use them free. And that is how I usually work. So I do not just go and start a design. I go to the community tab and search and see what kind of projects what people are building. Uh, there are plugins. So a lot of good features. We'll just have a look uh, all of them under one. Uh, let's start with basic color shapes, color lines, uh, offset color. Okay. Yeah, so what are you showing is prototype uh, for the which app? Yeah, so he created a uh, lo fi prototype for the whole class. So this is how a prototype looks like. Uh, okay, it's not visible here. What happened? Okay. Uh, Sorry for that, but okay, so this is how the prototype looks like. So there is this lines which shows basically from what screen to what's the next screen that's going to happen after you have a, let's say a button, a touch button, or you click the button, and all of this jungle of arrows which is showing what happens when you click button. Okay, so prototyping is a phase where you're just trying to, you know, combine all your screen, all your designs together, and uh, if you have anything else to add. So this is this web application. Uh, we'll show the prototype first. And so prototyping is fun, you know. You are just making your designs number like so this is work scene that he's currently working on. And uh, yeah it's almost looked like a real website. Okay, it's not functional, it's not coded, but it just looks like a real website. This prototype helps uh, web developers basically know what exactly the designer is trying to say, what exactly the product that you are trying to make. And uh, so this is a hi-fi prototype. It has all you know colors, brands defined, all the things are in detail. Whereas uh, the Warcraft thing was a little low fi uh, All right, anything else? Okay, so we have a couple of Figma experiments that uh, only try. He has an amazing Instagram page, and dot Designs. Uh, we'll share the link. So, these are like you can make credit cards on Figma. Then there is this animation. So, a lot of fun things. A lot of fun things he tries. Okay, wait, it's not visible. It's visible. Uh, so, this is like a website layout where the clock is, you know, the background is. spot like effect that he created using some masking tools. So what's a mask? That's a good question. We'll look into that. Uh, so yeah. So what what the point is, it's not just about design, it's about having fun. Okay. So design is fun. It's fun for me, it's fun for me, it, it's fun for everyone I just a few, you know, just start liking it. Uh, so this is a small animation of on and off. Okay. So you can also create this using Figma prototype. A lot of things, a lot of things. Even we'll create NFT, it's very fun. It's very fun to just watch how we are making this things, how we are making this things come to life. So yeah, coming back to Figma, we'll start. So everyone has created a Figma file? All right. So what are we trying to do is, we are trying to, yeah. 
So we just go through all the important, the top level tools. Okay, the first, the first tool that you see is is a move tool. So a move and scale tool. So move is basically you are moving the object. Okay, you're just clicking, dragging the object. So only if you just click and drag an object, yeah, that's move. Okay, and scale is basically you're scaling an object. So from your creating, uh, just creating the object. Make this small, small, big, whatever you want. And you can do that directly from the corners as well. So you see the four dots. These are like the anchor points, and you can just use that to create the scale of the object and a lot of things. Next is a frame. So a frame is basically where you put your design. Okay. So let's say you have a notebook. In notebook, you are writing. Similarly, frame is a place where you put the design. Frame is a place where you are designing. So you can create any frames. So uh, for now we can uh, we can just show the frame like the basic frames we have, right? Okay. So frames has a preset of you know uh, frame sizes. So let's say we are creating for iPhone 14. iPhone 14, the first one. So what it does is it creates a frame where you can design, and it's the size of iPhone 14 screen. So you exactly know what you are working on. So we have all these different frames. Uh, next shape is next tool is shapes. Are you guys following right on your screens? Okay. So shapes we have triangle, line, arrows, eclipse, polygon, star, and you can even place an image of it. So let's make a rectangle. And every of these tools have some uh, shortcuts. Uh, you can learn it. You you don't want to learn it. That's fine. You can just just click over. And let's try changing. Let's click the triangle, sorry, rectangle, and see what kind of properties does it have. Okay. So there's a lot of this over here. We can come there. There's a lot of information over here, but nothing to be scared of. So these are just x and y. These are like the position of that particular rectangle, x and the y coordinate. Uh, w and h. W is width. H is for height. So you can just change the width and height as ever you want to. Okay, you can make a very pixel perfect design. And uh, this is the angle. And this is uh, basically how rounded the corner should be. So only we can just increase it to 30. Right, so if you go, so now you have a very nice rectangle with a rounded corner, which is looking like a nice, I don't know, shape. All right. So we will skip this part, these are constraints, nothing to be worried about. Now we will go to the next part which is fill, fill is the color, you can again, this is the color picker, choose whatever color you want, let's make it, let's make it, okay. And in colors also we have a lot of things, right, we have gradients, so let's make a linear gradient, this is a basic gradient, and you can choose, the, choose two colors, and we now have a, have a very nice rectangle -ish object with a gradient, nice, alright, uh, then there is stroke, we add a stroke which is, and we can increase the stroke size, let me black, make a black, so now you have a rectangle object with a linear gradient with a stroke, and a lot of things, we will get to it, If you have any doubts, you can, you know, just raise hand the yeah. yeah. Show again the gradient, how to add a gradient. So you go to fill, and at the top there is solid linear radial. Choose linear. So that's a linear gradient. Okay? Alright. So moving on, this was like basic shapes, then we'll have this pen tool. So pen tool is basically now you can like freely draw designs, you can create designs like curves and 
right? I think or any typical uh, things which is not basic shapes. So let's try to create something for any game. Create this location wala. So let's try to create a location mark. Yeah, it's okay. It's not perfect, but we'll see. So you can try the pen tool. You can basically create it. curves, beautiful curves, and or something which has more curves and more straight lines and things like this. Okay, and uh, <laughs> yeah, of it. Okay, so by the way, this is uh, all vectors. There is a difference between. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll tell this difference when we are exporting the things. Okay. So this is a basic. So we can create a lot of things from pen tool as well when we are have a much detailed design. The next is a text tool. So you can add text to the designs. Basic text. You can change fonts. You can change color. Add stroke. Same thing as we did with the rectangle. And that's pretty much it. You have shapes, text. Then. And you can move the designs around, you can create frames, you can export them. This is like the basic, we touch touching the basics. And we have other tools as well, which are used for collaborations and plugins. But these are the main tools text, pen, shapes, and move. Okay? Alright. So now what we are going to do is, you, you guys can keep experimenting, we'll create a screen uh, right in front of you, which is Okay, so we'll create a screen uh, which is like this images are there, right? Yeah. Can you show the so we'll just try to create this, replicate this right now in front of you guys. And we'll create this and we'll show and tell what is what are we trying to do. Uh, 
I is using a text tool basically at this text e, we can change fonts, we can change the size of the text basic things if you are talk to what you use or Google Docs or Microsoft Word okay. uh, Point of this exercise was this showing you how easily you can create a login screen, which took only like three to four minutes. And if you like keep practicing, you can create the same thing. It's not that it's it's a working screen, but at least it will give you some idea what kind of project you're trying to create. Maybe you're participating in a hackathon, or maybe you work in a presentation, or you're just trying to you know pitch something to your investor. But now you have a login screen, which is much more clear can tell what kind of product type you are trying to make. We can even prototype, somebody is trying to prototype this thing. So, uh, what we can do is, now, when the user click on this button, okay, so can you show the whole prototype one step, okay. the best login screens, on the best screens, sorry, uh, because the shadow is not working, we wanted to show the shadow, but it's fine. So, now only we show how to prototype. So, you click the frame, you click the prototype, you saw, that's uh, prototype, okay, you switch to the prototype phase. Now you click on the asset that you want, basically change the screen. So you click on the button and it will basically go to the next screen when you click that button. And you can change some things like on tap, on drag, uh, there are different actions that the user can perform. So there's other actions. And what, what you want to do, navigate to the next screen and what kind of animation you want. Maybe you want a drop down, maybe you want a sliding animation. There's a lot of animation, right? When we create a presentation, uh, so there's a lot of animation styles. So what would you reverse a slide in, I guess, you do a slide in. Yeah, so you do the slide, which basically on tap the new screen to the slide. Now, when you click log in, hi. Hi. Okay. So now you have a login screen with, with four or five minutes. And you can do the same thing for the rest of the screens login, tabs, whatever product you're trying to make. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much okay. Additional thing, there is something called inspect. So what you can do with inspect is you can get the code level details of your assets. So what, what I mean by code level details, for example, this button. So uh, when you try to make this application in the let's say mobile framework such as Flutter or Android, you're trying to get the details such as colors, the shape, the size, uh, what kind of roundness have you given to the button. So uh, all these details are right here. So when you go to the inspect tab, uh, you have this code. So there is Android, iOS, CSS. So even for the web page, you can just copy paste this particular uh, thing, and the same thing can be done in the web page. So this is part of the handoff. So what is handoff? So once you're done with the design, uh, the result, the team, the design team basically handoffs all these details to the uh, web developer team, and. This is like helping them uh, handing off code level details as well. So yeah, and last thing is export. Uh, so let's say you you can export uh, the assets that you created. So if you go down and you select a screen, 
if you go down, this is export button. Just click on it. And you can export it as a PNG, PDF, JPEG, or an SVG. SVG is basically the vector format that we are just talking about. So PNG, JPG, PDF, and SVG. Or uh, you can uh, export that and you can use it like you can share it for social media or whatever. That's exported as a PNG. And uh, yeah, now you have a PNG of the same thing. Easily exported. Now you share it, whatever you want to do, you can do it. So yeah, that's how you that's how a basic design flows. Yeah. So okay, it's a plugin. How to okay, so what we use is a plugin. So the fifth option in the top, the sixth option. So over here, basically there is a plugin. You can search the plugins, iconic file. There's a lot of plugins, but we are using iconic file. There is no. Yes, so you can use those plugins and you can basically get the icons. There's a lot of plugins. There's a lot of there are plugins to basically uh, do a lot of things. Uh, you can explore the plugins. For example, uh, you do some stuff. So most of the time, when you are making this design, you need some placeholder image, right? So Unsplash has this. Yeah. So Unsplash is a basically a directory of images where you can just search for the images. For example, we want images of love. Search love. Lava. <laughs> okay, so now we have images of lava. These are free to use images, no copyright issues. You can just use the images in your design as you want. So you click the image, the images is important in the design file. And these are like good images, verified by uh, verified artists, sorry, photographers. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of plugins to explore. Uh, then Okay, so we are almost done with the time as well. Uh, any doubts, anything, anything you want to discuss? I'm out of yeah. Anything? You know, that side. All good? All right. How many of you tried following the login page, like making the login? What are you guys trying to do? Okay, big mouth. What? Just experimenting. Just experimenting. Okay, great. All right. So just so we are done with the first session. The next session is we are trying to create uh, NFT artworks, and uh, I'll just give a TLDR of that. We can show the NFT. Okay. So we already have created a lot of files for you guys, so that we can just start directly working on it. Uh, we'll go through the process of what what are we going to do with this. What is the result? And uh, yeah, that's for the next session. Uh, maybe we'll try, you know, try involving you guys to make this assets, whatever files we have created. And yeah, we'll see. Uh, do you have those output files? No. I'll share. Add drop, add drop, hold, hold. Okay, wait. I will show you the last.
Yeah, yeah. It's already recorded. Yeah, that's fine. Is that okay? All right. Uh, So, okay, so this is the total volume created. So it's like uh, 
lot, a lot of Ethereum. Uh, These are like 368 orders and 38% Unicorn. So basically, what I'm trying to say is uh, a lot of this artwork have value. People see value in that. You might see, you might not see, but today we are going to create something like this using Figma and subscribes. All right. Uh, I'll just show another artwork collection. So this is BAYC here. Yeah. Cool. So this is BAYC, another very popular uh, NFT collection. They have this eight different features. Again, automatically generated. Uh, these are assets, layers, different layers generating this artwork. Again, a lot of great work, great artwork. Another, another collection. This is doodles. This is more uh, colorful. These are different people with different features again. And uh, yeah. And the last is Moonbirds. This is an NFT of owls. So, so when you go to OpenSea, you can just search and you will find a lot of great artwork, a lot of great artists publishing their artwork as NFT. Uh, so OpenSea is a marketplace. Okay. And yeah, even you can have a account in OpenSea and you can start publishing your artwork if you want. Okay. Uh, moving back to the Figma file. Okay, so what we have is again different frames, each frame containing one asset, uh, which is belonging to the part of the artwork. And uh, so what we do is we export them. So once we export them, uh, so like I showed earlier, right? We can export them. Once we export them, we'll have a file. So once we export them, we are just this different images of the artwork and we have divided them into folders. So uh, if you just show the folder structure, go to the, yeah, so this is a folder structure. <coughs> Background, close, I, I just divided the images in a folder structure. Uh, that is how the script works. Uh, you can also customize the script. Uh, but yeah, so we have background, clothes, eye, face, head, head, ear, all these things. Now, next part is you have to basically tell the script how all these layers should combine. Okay, so uh, do you understand what the layers, what I'm talking about? So, layers is basically, uh, so you start with the background. On that background, you are adding something. So, that something, so everything is put on a different layer. And once you combine all the layers together, uh, using some source, using a script, uh, it creates an image. Okay. So, for example, if we talk about a uh, hair, this is just a trans. So, the background is transparent. So that once it put on a back, uh, on a color background, only this hair, hair is shown. Okay. So you can even do that in Figma. So when you are exporting in Figma, there is an option that you don't have to remove the background. You can do that. And this is how the file structure is created. All right. Uh, once this is the uh, there's a configuration file. Okay, you do not have to worry about this right now. I just want to just show the okay. So this is a place where I'm saying okay, let's start with the background. So first there is a background. Second is a skin tone. Or a space, hair, laptops, clothes. So this is how you define all the layers. We'll add on one by one. Okay. And then you can just start the step and this is how the image will get created. So we'll just start by creating say few images. Okay. Do not worry about JavaScript because JavaScript will be taught to you in the next session, but uh, So it will start creating, uh, so I've specified the configuration for that. It has to create 256 images. So what it will do is, it will start taking all these different layers, start combining it, and once it start combining, you are seeing the screen, right? these numbers. These are basically the DNA. So what, what we are trying to do is, we are creating artworks which are unique. 
every artwork is going to be unique. So it will have a different DNA. By DNA, it's just basically which layer it is selecting, which component it is selecting. And uh, through that, uh, after this is this process is done, uh, you just get the output of 256 images. And all of them are unique because you know every DNA sequence that you are generating is unique. And uh, if you can just see the output. So basically the idea of this exercise is, okay, there is a design, you can do designing, you can combine some code and you can create something like this. And maybe not this, maybe you are trying to do something else. You can maybe use some text, 